of a mountain and wave your arms around. <laughs> well, I'm climbing a different mountain at the moment, so I'm really excited about that. Like she speaks in Sound of Music talk all yes, the time. <laughs> You're one of my favourite things. Really? They just come oh, trotting out. We look forward to hearing uh, much more of that, Connie. Lovely to have you here. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was the next. <laughs> no, but you know, I felt safer for it. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So if you've nothing Can to you hide, there's many no points, problem Connie? with if you it. Went, if you went home at night and they were lining the streets, would it, would it bother you? I always feel safe um, in, in my area. Anyway, I, I've just moved to North London and it was very different from living back in Wales in a, in a rural kind of um, setting. But I bet, you're I, think a, I bet you're a £10 million pound gated. <laughs> <laughs> really not. I'm really not. Oh, come now. Barely more than my student accommodation at <laughs> drama school. But it was kind of, it, it, I feel very safe when I see a community officer walking down the street or a police mm. officer just to know that they're there if anything's happening and they've got their eye on the community I think that's great yeah. and we recently had our, our first street fate and I think it's brilliant that a street that's had so many incidents on our street yeah. can have a community gathering I yeah. think that's we're really missing important. that really aren't we yeah absolutely. Okay, so with the zero tolerance the point is it, it's expensive as well it costs money it costs money in terms of getting the officers out there it costs money in terms of processing the offenders mm -hmm. through the system it costs money to put people in prison a lot of money yeah. and so all of that is a burden for but taxpayers. But then, in the first place, the maybe they prevent the, the act happening then. So I it may be, it may be, but there are other things driving crime down. Don't remember, for the last 10 years we've seen unbroken economic growth. People are richer, they're less likely to commit crime anyway. Mm. Um, Connie, uh, on your way to um, global superstardom, you were a waitress at one time, weren't you? How was you? Were you any good at a wait as a waitress? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> uh, well, I, I worked in Pizza Express for a while. I was, you know, um, I moved up the ranks and I stayed there for quite some time, about nine months before I moved on to tele sales so it wasn't so bad so what about what about tips is what we're getting on yeah. to talk about ah, did you, yes did you do well for tips did you um, I, on average I think uh, uh, tips probably a shift uh, did 25 hours a week and every shift I probably get 28 pounds on average and I spent it all on shoes so I, yeah. I don't have any of it but at least you had it to spend on yes and I have a great collection of shoes now <laughs> the, um, with a lot of waiting staff so Connie you leave a meagre tip you could it could be in the it could be in the Daily Express the following day or something <laughs> couldn't it so what, what are you now I have to tip really high because I've been on here talking about tips but I think it's really difficult difficult when you're, when you're a waitress to, to ask for a tip and I think it's very difficult for the customer then if they don't know that the, the waiter or waitress is, is not getting a wage, mm. how are they supposed to know they should tip higher yeah. unless it's on the receipt and some people might not see that on of the course. receipt. And also when you're paying with a card and it comes up on the little machine that you, you can put a tip on that, I never do that, I want to have the waiter or waitress cash in hand. In hand. Kind of thing. Yeah that's so the really important you thing, know if you want to it. give a tip to the waitress or waiter pay it in cash. Mm. The problem with only being paid in tips in this country, we've got a culture, we don't really know what we're doing mm. with tips in America. You, you give a tip it, yeah. or you get, you get a rollicking as higher, you leave the restaurant, they, don't you? Yeah, they pay more like, more like 15, 20% tips in America mm. as standard and everybody would tip. Whereas in Britain, you know, you can get away with not tipping if you if you don't want to. Yeah. What was the single biggest one you got? Can you ever remember one? It was my graduation day and a guy tipped me 40 quid. Did he? Thank you very much, whoever you are. And how much, <laughs> Thank you. And how much was the bill? Uh, about, uh, about 28 or something. He really? said, uh, buy yourself a bottle of champagne. Did you sing for him? <laughs> I might have done. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're getting tipped for. Okay, <laughs> TV, what would any of us do without it, eh? Excellent question. <laughs> yes, it is. Connie, it started your whole career as well, obviously. I'm going to take you back now to how do you solve a problem like Maria. Here is the moment you won. <laughs> Connie! That scream you did, I don't think that came from the diaphragm. I think you just, I think you just screamed. It came from another planet. I've never seen a face like that before. What a moment, though, Connie, really. After there was so much work involved in that, wasn't there? It, it was hard work, but that was a moment that changed my life. And, uh, and everyone who voted really changed my life from from Pizza Express and telesales mm. to the West End. Yeah, but you mean, you, you did study it. You worked hard for this for a very long time, Lady. It wasn't just the result of a talent show that no, got you No, it wasn't. I did go to drama school and to Mountview Academy of Theatre Arts for three years and studied musical theatre. I got a first-class degree um, and won an award when I left for top graduate, yeah. and it was all very exciting. But the tough thing is getting to auditions and, uh, and also staying in London and, and being seen by all those casting directors. And I really just couldn't find the right role, and I was very grateful when the opportunity came along with Angela Webber and David Ian for playing yeah. Maria. But it seems after 
you've done a lot of hard work to win that, but then the hard work kind of really started because the mm. kind of press were onto you a bit and there was this suggestion that the, the proper actors and actresses weren't keen on a, a reality show winner coming in. Was that as, as stressful as was made out? Well, probably not, because when I went into the actual cast, they were all very supportive and they knew that I'd been to drama school. I think it was probably the picture that they painted beforehand of the tele sales girl, the shop worker, the Pizza Express girl, and they thought, well, she hasn't had any training, so she won't be able to hack it. But I was very lucky... Um, um, that I had uh, been to drama school and had all those tools um, in my in my actress's toolbox to, to bring out when I needed them. So you didn't have two of the older children whispering to each other, she's rubbish, she's rubbish. <laughs> no, the kids that, were that lovely. <laughs> yeah. No, they were brilliant. And they'd all been to drama school as well, so we could talk about the process. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of the other shows as well, like the Nancy's and all the rest of it? I'm an avid fan. I was yeah. hooked. and I was recording it if I was out or working. Um, I thought Jodie was great. She had a great personality and I'm a big Lee Mead fan as well. But people at home think that they know you, so therefore they want to go and see you perform on, on stage as well so these real actors can't surely complain about that well hopefully not i mean it and the show thrives on it and the, the, at the moment the west end is thriving because we have a, a television audience uh, mixing with the theatrical audience i think good. it's mm. brilliant it's bringing more money into the west of end course. So the, the question with you, Connie, was what you do after The Sound of Music. Yes. And we've got the answer now. So Very what exciting. Are you I'm in a new show called They're Playing Our Song at the Many A Chocolate Factory in London Bridge. Um, um, my leading man is Alistair McGowan. And basically it's a love story. Oh, look how cute. Um, <laughs> it's a love story, yeah. uh, roughly based on a, on a true story of... Um, Carol Bayer-Sager, a lyricist who I play, and Marvin Hamlish, who Alistair plays... Um, and they won, Carabao Sega won loads of awards, uh, Grammy Awards, Academy Awards. And people who come watch will probably know a lot of, uh, of her work. Mm. She wrote songs like When I Need You, A Groovy Kind of Love, Nobody Does It Better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a much smaller space you're in now, isn't it? It's the Chocolate Factory is a much smaller space. Yeah. There are only 170 yeah. seats, so it's a, it's a hot ticket. And it's great for me to be working so close to an audience. Yeah. At the Palladium, of course, you've got 2,500 yeah. seats. You can't get away with anything. In no. You can't get away with audience. anything. I think it's great for the audience who see me on television then yeah. to, to come and be that close. And yeah. for me as an actress, I've, I'm going to learn a lot from working in a more intimate space. Mm. Connie, would you like to see a Beatle? Oh, I'd love to see Here's a Beatle. Here's a Beatle. How long is this run you're doing that they're playing outside? From the 24th of July till the 28th of September. Right, so you've only got to work with the same person every day for three months. Yeah, but months, it's a very basically. funny show. It's a great yeah. show. Come watch it. Have you ever worked with anybody for a year every day? Yes, I worked for a year and a half in the side of music, and that oh, was right. fabulous. Gibble, it's not a pleasant experience, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> uh, thanks, Connie. Thank Best you. of luck with it. Thank Here you,